I know at some point every Southerner has thanked their lucky stars for the invention of the slow cooker. It's that perfect appliance that allows you to take those award-winning recipes to the chili cook-off and grandma's dumplings to the church potluck. Of course, it's also become our little hero for cooking on busy weekdays and helps us get quick and easy meals on the table. So let's show some love to our slow cooker buddy with a fan favorite recipe for beef tips and rice in this episode of Behind the Recipe. Yep, there's nothing quite like coming home and having the house filled with the smells of supper that's ready to eat. And it's even better when somebody else has done all the work. And that somebody, of course, is the slow cooker. Now chances are you've heard both the terms crock pot and slow cooker, and you've probably also wondered what the difference was. The truth of the matter is they're pretty much the same thing. Crock pot is a brand name for slow cooker, just like Q-tip is a brand name for cotton swab. When it comes to choosing the right slow cooker, the options are really endless. You can spend as little as $25 or as much as $250. Slow cookers these days can be multi-use appliances that sear, roast, bake, even air fry. But I have to tell you, due to an unfortunate incident with a power outage that caused me to have to throw a $20 roast out, I typically like to go for the basic model these days. Let's start with the stew meat. Now 90% of the time I go to the supermarket and I pick up a two pound package of whatever it is that they have labeled as stew meat. It's probably not the best idea though. A package labeled stew meat can often contain a variety of cuts and trimmings and can range from gristly to lean to fatty all in the same package. It means wildly different cook times and bites in the end product. The thing is though, is that stew meat is often incredibly more affordable. But if you're looking for the best and have a little extra cash to throw into this, head to the butcher and ask for him to cut two pounds of chuck roast into one inch cubes. I find that this cut has the most flavor and does the best in the slow cooker. The reality is this recipe just about never made it onto southernbike.com. Thank you. Yep, one of the most popular recipes actually was never really intended to go on the blog. I had made it for supper one night, and while I was photographing another recipe, I decided to shoot the beef tips just in case I was ever in a situation where I didn't have a recipe for that week. Well, that week did come, and I put the beef tips up so there was some new content one week. Lo and behold, it became the most popular recipe quickly and stayed in the number one spot for several years before being edged out by my five ingredient enchiladas and ultimate chicken spaghetti. I get questions all the time about searing the meat before it goes into the slow cooker. The truth is, the myth that searing meat somehow seals in the juices is just that, a myth. And being that we're slow cooking this meat in liquid, it probably wouldn't make that much difference anyway. That said, searing does add flavor. Think about all the golden brown deliciousness that you get on meat when you sear it. That's the result of what's called the Maillard reaction. Uh, and while that's super important on things like steak, we're basically gonna cook this to death. So personally, I find that it's a step that's unnecessary. To start, we're gonna spray a six quart slow cooker with non-stick cooking spray. Now another great tip here is to use slow cooker liners. These liners make the cleanup process super easy because you just take them out and toss them. So for this recipe, you're going to need stew meat, gravy mix, a bouillon cube, water, cream of mushroom soup, and onion. The other thing to keep in mind is with this little gravy packet here you wanna make sure that you have a packet that makes two cups of gravy. Or you can do like we did here and buy two packets that make one cup each. 
this also brings up another really great point. Resist the urge to open the lid on your slow cooker while you're cooking. Every time you do that, it allows moisture and heat to escape. And so for each time that you take the lid off, you're going to need to add 20 to 30 minutes to the cook time. So keep it closed. While that's cooking, I need to run some errands. Y'all want to join me? Come on. What shade of green are you waiting for? Hey, I'm cooking dinner. Right now. Yeah. And it's just that easy. Hang on, I've got one more thing. Have you been traumatized by thin gravy? If so, we can help. Just mix one tablespoon of cornstarch with two tablespoons of cold water or broth. This is called a slurry. And then whisk that right into the gravy. Then we're gonna put the lid on the slow cooker, crank it up to high, and give it about 20 minutes. Now keep in mind, this is a chemical reaction and heat's really important. So it may take a few more minutes if you've had the lid off the slow cooker for a little while. There we go. And it's just that easy. Your family is gonna love every bite of this and you can thank your slow cooker for making it one of the easiest meals ever. Good job, buddy. Mm. Y'all enjoy. What am I supposed to say now? I forgot. This also brings up a... <laughs> yes, we are doing Russian cooking show. <laughs> yes, it is. This is Crockpot. This is, <laughs> this is crock Yes. This is crockpot top. <laughs> you put the top on the crockpot. This is crockpot. <laughs> Don't judge me.